What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we're going to be installing an air filter on my 3D printer. Specifically, today we're going to be installing it on the Voron 0.1 here, but if I like how this one works, I'm already planning ones that could work on the Anycubic Mega S that I do a lot of other videos on. This filter specifically is going to be an exhaust filter that uses activated carbon sheets and a HEPA filter. This HEPA filter specifically comes from a Roomba. So I really like the idea of using a filter I already had laying around or you can buy them cheaply on Amazon. I have always wanted to install a printer specific air filter that's run by the microcontroller instead of a general room air filter. I keep it under the table and it just filters the entire room. But it's not the most efficient thing because it's just either on or off. It's not print specific. With this one, it's controlled by the microcontroller, so theoretically I could go in there and put special scripts to have it run a little bit when it's printing, and after it's done, it'll go to full speed for maybe a couple minutes to fully evacuate the chamber. All these other various ways I could control it specific to whether I'm printing or not. Now, I don't have a way to test whether this filter will be very good. The biggest test I'm going to be able to do is actually whether I can smell it or not. Your nose is pretty good at picking up things, and currently I can smell if printers are running or not. So that's kind of the goal, to cut down on that smell coming off the printer while it's printing. There are more elaborate systems, like the Nevermore filter system, and if this system doesn't work, then I'm going to look into that one in the future. But first I wanted to try the easy, simple option, and if that doesn't work, then I can go into more complex systems later. This design is something I modified from an existing design. The existing design that's out there replaces this top acrylic top hat panel with your new filter. This design covers several different criteria I was looking for, one of them being to cover this big hole in the back of the printer. Since I didn't put the back panel on the Voron 0.1, there's a big gap right here where air, the hot air inside of the chamber can just escape, and so I would like to be able to cover that off. The second big benefit being that the filter and the fan and everything is attached to the main body of the printer instead of to the top hat. So that way I can keep removing the top hat whenever I want. Super easy to do and that way I can get in there and work on the printer whenever I want. First thing to do is to print these parts. I did print them all in ABS. That's just because I had I wanted this color to match the rest of the printer. I do think ABS might be a little overkill for this. You can print these in pretty much any filament that works for you since it's going to be external to the printer and not load bearing at all. This one piece will be the only thing that will be touching the inside of the chamber. So maybe print this first one in ABS. And since I was already printing ABS, I just went ahead and did the rest of it in that filament. And on to the additional materials you'll be needing here. There's one Roomba HEPA filter. I bought a big pack of, these are solder fume extractor activated carbon sheets. There's a bunch of different options on Amazon. I will link these in the description down below. There's also one fan. I will link this one that I'm using as well down below. It's a 24 volt fan so we can plug it directly into our controller board to control it right from there. Other than that, here's the list of screws and you will need some heat set inserts but I already had all of these laying around from extras when I built the printer. And the first thing we need to do is install those heat set inserts. So let's go do that. So here are our parts. We've got the soldering iron on and heating up and we're going to be ready to put in these heat set inserts. We're gonna need 16 in total. Heat set inserts are super easy if you've never tried them before. Just a little bit of heat and some light pressure and they go right in. Once you try them out, you'll wanna put them on all of your functional prints. They're so useful. Some of these prints didn't turn out amazingly since I was still calibrating the Voron 0.1 on these, but it's not a structural print, so print quality is more of an aesthetic part with this design. Super easy, super simple. Ready to go. So here's the basic breakdown of how it all looks like when it should be going together. It's pretty straightforward, so I think we can just montage through this whole assembly process. So here we are at the back of the printer, and the nice part about this design is it'll fit right here. It covers up these chains that'll be moving back and forth. It keeps everything enclosed. 
it blocks off the enclosure of the printer so the hot air can't escape. And it mounts right here with only two screws, so it will be pretty easy to remove later if we wanted to. And these are just two standard M3 by 8 screws. And there we have it installed. I will keep an eye on the belts to make sure the belts aren't rubbing on these pieces of plastic. They should be covering with not touching. But if there are rubbing, then I'll change things. I could put a spacer in there if that happens, but I'll put that in the conclusion of the video if I do need to change it after I run some tests. And conveniently, this plug is right here. It can go right down to the control board, and there's an already an open spot on the SKR Pico up at the top. So the last thing to do is configure this in the software. This is how I defined it inside of Clipper. That pin name will be different if you use a different pin or a different controller board. This is for the SKR Pico, and I used fan pin number three on that board. And setting it up to run with your prints is super easy. At the start of my print, I put in a line to tell it to turn the fan on to 30%. You can put in any value between zero and one, zero being all the way off, one being at 100%. So I have it at the start of a print, it goes to 0.3. So 30% run, and it seems to work really well. Here's an example of some ABS I printed, and these stuck so well, I needed the flex plate to be able to get them off. And there's no warping at all, which is a great sign. ABS is kind of the big test of whether it warps or not. And so if I can get ABS working on here while it's running, that's a good sign of it's not decreasing the temperature inside of the chamber too much. And then in my end print scripts, after it's done all the normal ending print things, it turns this exhaust fan to 100% and runs it there for two minutes right now. I think that's so far what I kind of like of it. Exhausts the entire chamber, really filters all the air that's in there. So here's the fan running at 30%. I have the microphone pointing right between us and at both of us at a similar distance away. So this is kind of a judge of how quiet it is. It's very quiet. So I would say this is gonna be quieter than any printer running at all. And then at the end of it, it will go to full volume. And this, I would say this fan volume will be louder than your print running, but I only have it configured to run for two minutes and then it will turn off. And I do like the noise this fan is making. It's a nice large fan, so it doesn't have some annoying electrical whirring that some smaller fans can have. It's linked in the description down below if you're interested in this project. And now for the conclusion of, is it good? Yeah, I, I'm super impressed with how good it is and how easy and hands-off it is. Now that it's installed, it's here, and it just filters the air. I don't have to think about it. I just print like normal, and it will automatically turn on while it's printing a little bit. And at the end of a print, it filters out the rest of the air in there. And so I don't really have to think about it. I will change out these filters every now and then, but they're nice and cheap carbon filters. And the pack that I bought already has several I should be set for a good long while now. It doesn't filter everything. I do have to get my nose right up next to the exhaust filter here to be able to smell the ABS smell. Now I can be nearby or in the same room with it while it's printing and I don't get those strong chemically smells that I used to get from ABS. I would highly recommend some sort of filter project on your printer, especially if you've got an enclosed one like this, it makes it super easy. I am still thinking about how I would put a filter on the Anycubic Mega S. I'm thinking putting a bigger, maybe a Nevermore filter right next to it might help, but I'm still kind of in the planning phase of that project and not sure where that one will go. If you have any questions about this project, let me know in the comments down below. I'll link my files and the original files as well down in the comments down below. But anyway, if you stuck this far through the video and you like this type of content, hitting that like and subscribe button below really helps me out and helps it so you don't miss any of the future upcoming videos. I've got a lot of exciting projects and prints planned for the future, so you don't wanna miss those.